What up guys, my name is Will Cashin, aka White Trash Willie, and I am part of Undialed TV, which is a YouTube channel and Instagram page. Make sure to go check out the Instagram at Undialed TV, and that is basically a repost page where we repost cool scootering content, like all the latest and greatest stuff. We repost things like coolest tricks, interesting stuff, all sorts of stuff. So make sure you guys go check that out. But today we're doing a little bit different of a video. Today on Undialed, we're gonna talk about the controversial topic of whether or not scooters are a trend or not. And me personally, I really do not think scooters are just a trend. I don't think they're just a fad. I think that they're here to stay forever, and here's why. I'm gonna start off with telling you a little bit of backstory of scooters. If you wanna have real fun, you better have the scooter that can handle it. How are you gonna do wheelies without a wheelie bar? So the first scooter came out in the year 2000 and the first six months of them being out, they sold over 6 million models, which is absolutely insane. Like 6 million scooters, that's, that's crazy. Like that's so many scooters and that's just in the first six months. Over the next 10 years, they sold over 35 million models, which is crazy. They marked that for their 10 year anniversary, which was in 2010. And around this time is when aftermarket scooter parts became like a big thing. A lot of cool stuff started to come into the scooter market and so did the video parts. A lot of new video parts started to come out like the Proto video, the Razor video, and a lot of other stuff. And that's when the community really started to like be built. Now, when all these scooters first came out, like the 35 million scooters came out in the first 10 years, like you gotta think like out of all the 35 million people who bought a scooter or had a scooter, like at least a few of them had like experience building machinery and like CNCing parts and welding stuff. So you gotta think like out of those people, there was at least a few people that were like, oh, I wanna make the scooter like super cool and I wanna do a whole bunch of modifications to it. So that's when aftermarket parts really came about and that's when like the first core scooter scene started to come together when all these guys with all these good ideas and all these cool ways of making scooters better got together and started to film video parts. A lot of video parts started to come out around this time like the Proto video, the Razor video, and a lot of companies also came out as well. There was Proto, Scooter Resource, TSI, and that's when like the first one piece and two piece decks started coming out with the first one piece bars. There was an SES that came out. There was metal core wheels. There was all sorts of stuff that made your scooter better and made it more reliable instead of just sticking like bolts through your fold up and having hot glue wheels. There was lots of, lots of cool new modifications and that's like I said, when this real core scooters community started to like come about. And when all these aftermarket parts started to come out, that's when like the real core scooter community started to like explode. Today, there are hundreds, and I repeat, hundreds of scooter brands out here that makes all sorts of parts for any situation. There's companies that make the biggest bars ever. There's companies that make the smallest, lightest bars. There's companies that make the biggest decks. There's companies that make the smallest decks. There's companies that make big wheels. There's companies that make small wheels. There's companies that make all sorts of different compression systems. At this point, you can build so many different types of scooters that look so different from each other that it's it's absolutely insane. And you gotta think with all this like variety and all this personality like or customization that people and kids are gonna like latch onto that because People love customizing things and people love making things their own. So if you can make your thing that you're riding your own and make it your very own personal thing that no one else in the world has the exact parts, colors for, then that really makes it your thing and that makes it your like a piece of you. And that's one thing that I feel like will make scootering last is because every single scooter is so different from each other and every single scooter looks different and rides different that like it's very personalized and it's very like individualized and that's what makes it so cool and unique. Another cool reason that scooter that I feel that scooters are going to be around for a very long time is that the learning curve on them is very very like easy. When you first pick up a scooter, it literally takes no skill. Like I'm a professional scooter rider, I do this for my job and I'm going to tell you that when you first pick up a scooter, it is the easiest thing in the world to ride. You can literally like like I I have confidence that my grandma could just pick up a, like my scooter and ride around in a circle like no problem. But that's very similar to video games for example. Anyone can pick up a video game controller, press some random buttons and do some random stuff but it doesn't mean that you actually have like skill at it. The more and more that you start to work at scooters 
or work at like I'm gonna use video games as an example the more and more that you work on it the more and more you level up you get better characters and you eventually have actual skill in the game because the more and more you think what you want to do in the game you can actually do it because you have the muscle memory and the skill same thing with scooters although it's easy to do it first although it it might be easy for you to do a bar spin the first day or if you're good like black ninja you can do a tail up in 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> those tricks are easy but the more and more you build up the harder and harder it gets it's not like learning a tail up is as easy as learning a double flare triple whip it it's all you have to build up to it you have to learn skills and you have to like level up to it and because the learning curve at the beginning is so like easy it allows people who would be scared of trying something hard at first they they would be more inclined to try scootering because they can go and just try it out and see if they like it in the beginning before committing to like learning tricks and before they commit to like learn how to do crazy maneuvers. They can just be like, oh, I like this a little bit. I'm just going to ride around and then eventually they can be like, oh, I want to do a bunny hop and eventually they can be like, oh, I want to do a bar spin. And there's just a very like easy learning curve. So if someone is like scared of doing things in skate parks, it makes them it makes it more easy all right so along with the learning curve like I'm gonna say that learning a double tail up is probably about as hard as learning a kickflip and I I've saw and I've like wit like and I've witnessed with my own eyes like a scooter rider who's decent at scootering can hop on a skateboard very easily just like a skateboarder can hop on a scooter and do basic tricks super easily so it's like one isn't necessarily easier than the other it's just at the beginning at the very first steps scootering is a little bit easier and then over time they they match up with each other and become just as just as hard as doing anything else like it's it you're pushing yourself it's not like you're beating a game it's kind of funny i always hear people say like oh scooters are so easy like like they take no skill but it's like you literally can't beat scootering like at all like you can always do a harder trick. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be Ryan Williams, you can be Dakota Schutz, you can be anyone, and you can always do a harder trick. Like there's always one more tail up you can add. There's always one more bar spin you can add. So if you can never beat it, it doesn't necessarily make it easy because making something easy means you can finish it. And if you can't finish it, then it doesn't make it easy because like you're not beating anything. You're just challenging yourself. So it's like, yeah, you can say that it's easy, but that just means you're not challenging yourself enough. If you want to actually like do something hard on a scooter, then do something you don't think you can do. And then you'll be in for a challenge. Like that's just how it is. <laughs> so scootering is not easy. It's cha just challenging yourself. If you want to call it easy, then you're just going easy on yourself, honestly. Now I'm going to talk about the scooter community because the scooter community is honestly my favorite thing in the entire world. I love the scooter community more than anything and that's honestly the reason that's kept me into scootering for so long. The scooter community is massive, like so big, like bigger than we all think. It, it honestly is like there are scooter riders all over the world in every single country, in every single state, everywhere. There's a scooter community, at least at each and every individual park. There's at least a few scooter riders who get together and that's like, their little like crew and if you add all those people together like there's there has to be like almost millions of scooter riders like at this point there's so many scooter riders it's crazy it honestly is the events that we're doing now like every single i'm gonna say like park event every single comp there is enormous amount of numbers there's so many people there's so many spectators there's just so much hype and also in street jams as well <laughs> there's anywhere from like two to 500 kids at every single street jam and it's just this crazy gnarly event and it's just it's it's insane like it honestly is like it's it's crazy to see like so many people getting into scooters and so many people enjoying the scooter community the amount of shops is getting crazy too like I feel like every time I go on Instagram there's a new shop that is liking my photos there's a new shop that's doing like posting pictures of new parts I feel like with all these shops and all these events and all of these competitions like growing and, and becoming bigger and bigger, it's creating like memories that these kids are gonna like latch onto for the rest of their lives. And then when their dads with their kids are gonna be like, oh, when I was a kid, I would go to these street jams on my scooter and do all these 
crazy tricks and watch the gnarliest stuff go down. And I just, I honestly think that like all of this, everything that's going on right now is just like building a bigger backbone for the future of scootering. Because like we're gonna look at all these events as like the, some of the first events. Because if you think about scootering, like it's really not that old. Like it's, it's not even like 10 years old yet. Like, I mean, aftermarket scooters, like obviously fold-ups have been around for since 2000, but it, like scootering is not this old and like all these events and all these jams and all this unique stuff that we're doing, like it's really like building community and it's building like what scootering is. And it's, it's really just so cool to see. And it's, I really feel like it's building like a lasting like, like impression on what people think of scooters because it's like when somebody walking down the street sees this enormous mob of scooters riding by and then hitting this 25 stair handrail and doing these crazy tricks, like people are gonna remember that. Like people are gonna remember like, dang, I remember when I saw these scooter kids going crazy on this rail and it's just, I really feel like it's building like new, new interpretations in people's heads of what they think about scootering. Another like really cool thing about the scooter community that's like, I feel like very unique is that everyone in the scooter community like has each other's backs. And it, and when, what I mean by that is like, if you go to a skate park on a scooter and you see another person there with a scooter, like you're instantly their friends. I remember when I first started scootering when, and when scootering was like pretty small, whenever I would go to the skate park and see somebody on there, Razor Ultra Pro, I'd be like, yo dude, like, what's your name like where are you from it was just like it was so cool to like see other scooter riders and i feel like like because scootering is like not seen as like the coolest is the sickest thing whenever you see like another scooter rider with like at the skate park or like riding you you get hyped and you like oh like here's another person i could ride with here's another person i could meet here's another person i got to talk to and it's just like a very bonding thing that even though it's just a scooter, it's so cool. It's like instant friends. It's awesome. For example, if you look at DC, they put out this promotion a while ago that was about, it was about these Wes Kramer shoes that like this big like campaign policy that was like, oh, you need to eliminate all scooter riders and scootering is just needs to die. And I remember that like basically put DC out of business. Like the scooter community saw this and was like, nah. And, and like literally we're, we're like fought back so hard. As the nation of scooter riders go ape shit all over DC social media, screaming hashtag fuck DC everywhere. DC, with your old filing bankruptcy ass. Y'all need to be nice to everybody. I don't even see DC like post anything about scooters. That campaign is gone and it's like, it's just the funniest thing to see. Like DC like messed up messing with the scooter community because at the end of the day, it's everyone that rides a scooter has respect for somebody else that rides a scooter. So we're all gonna like come together if somebody like attacks us like that. And it's just so cool to see like how united everyone is. But I know all of you guys are typing on your keyboard right now. But Will, there's people fighting in the scooter community. Well duh, there's people fighting in the scooter community. Everyone is so passionate about scootering that like when they see another scooter rider doing something in the scooter community that like contradicts what they find passionate, like they're gonna argue about it because they're passionate about it. Scooter riders take scootering to heart, so if anything like contradicts scootering, they're gonna get upset about it and they're gonna say something about it. Passion is driving the, all, all of the arguments. It's not like people are actually mad at each other, people are just passionate and they wanna like show it, and they wanna show what they really believe. So that's the reason people, I feel, I feel like people fight all of the time. It's not, not actually beef, it's just people are just passionate and they, they just want what they feel like in scootering is important to them. They want to like show that. Let me get like into a little bit more into like the core scooter community. Something that I think is kind of cool about scooter riders is that like every single scooter rider has a little niche in their head that like makes them okay with riding a scooter. And I feel like that's like really interesting. I remember Busty Justy said that to me when I was at, when he was at the house. And that like really stuck with me because I, I really feel like every scooter rider does have a niche in their head that allows them to like ride a scooter because scootering like Honestly, it's not that cool. Like if you scooter because you want to be cool, like that is such a lame reason to scooter, honestly. I feel like scootering is so cool be is because everyone that scooters like loves it because it's not like it's not like something that you can be like, "Oh, I'm only going to scooter because like it makes me look sick." Like if you want to do that, like go and skate, but it's like if you want to do do like something that like you're going to like fall in love with and that you're going to like not care what people think about you to because you do it, like scooter like i remember in high school i got so much crap for scootering i got so much hate for scootering it was like crazy and not from like my immediate friends but just like 
people would say stuff here and there. And I don't know, it, it kind of got to me at times, but I remember like, it didn't matter because I just love scootering that much. Like it was, that that's just how it was. And like, I didn't really care what people said. So it's like, scootering is just tight. Like it's, it just is. When there's the scooter community, it's like there's this whole group of people that think the exact same way. So it's like you instantly like bond with them as friends and it's just, it's sick. It's so cool. I, I, that's one reason why I love the scooter community. Let me talk about like the YouTube scooter community really quick. And this is like a really small group of people I feel like. And, and I would say that I fit into it. Clayton fits into it. There's Raymond, Scooter Brad, Cody Flom. Tanner Fox is still part of it only because I feel like every time that I have a conversation about scooters, Tanner's name comes up. So you're still in the scooter community. Jake, I remember when I like first got into scootering, if there was multiple YouTube channels making videos every single day about what I like to do, I could go home after school and spend like, I don't know, an half an hour to 45 minutes watching my favorite scooter YouTubers every single day talk about scootering. Like, I would be so hyped. Like that'd be so cool and that would keep me into scootering so much because I would always have something new to think about and always something new to talk about. And it's just so cool because I feel like with all the scooter YouTubers, although they might do stuff here and there that, that is, could be whack, they could, I mean, we've done stuff that I think is kind of whack. Although there is like certain things that kind of like are controversial about the YouTube scooter community, I feel like in general, everything that we're like putting into this, into the scooter community is like beneficial because we're just helping keep kids like into it. And we're helping like build the core cute community because we're getting more and more kids passionate about it. And if kids are passionate about it, then they're gonna do it and they're gonna like love it and they're gonna continue scootering just like we are all doing as the scooter YouTubers and as the core scooter community. Every single aspect of like the scooter community being covered in the YouTube world. We have Jacked Out covering all the street. We have Raymond Warner covering like the park. We have Cody Flom covering the park as well. We have like, and I'm not gonna say park and street, but we have like a, a whole array of scooter YouTube that is just like so unique. And like another cool thing is we like, we literally have like so much going on in the scooter community that we literally have a news channel, Scooter Brad, reporting about the drama in the sport, which is like crazy that scootering has gotten that big that there's enough people that want to regularly watch that. And it's just so cool to see like how many people are getting involved. Claudius is the type of person in the scooter community that I feel like doesn't get enough respect for what he does. Whoa. What just happened? If you look at kids these days, kids don't go home and watch TV. They go home and watch YouTube videos. And if kids like young, I mean young kids, I mean if these kids can go home and watch content about scootering instead of watching, I don't know, like Door the Explorer, they can go home and watch things about scootering and things about good nutrition and things about like staying hydrated and things about like staying active and exercising, like that is the best possible thing that like kids could be told these days. I know it's by this crazy guy who wears neon, but like that's what ki keeps kids attention and that's what like keeps kids like interested. And it's so good that he's being part of the scooter community because he's building such a foundation for these young kids getting into scootering because eventually when these kids get a little bit older, they're gonna be interested in edits, they're gonna be interested in comps, they're gonna be interested in all this because Claudius is like talking about it in his videos. And it's, it's so good to see because he's really building the scooter community from like nothing. Like, I mean, not the scooter community we know right now, but I mean the scooter community in five, 10 years from now, like he's building that right now. And all those kids that, that are watching, like they're eventually gonna be scooter riders. Well, maybe not all of them, but like a good percentage of them are gonna be scooter riders. Another like interesting things about like the kids in the scootering community is as opposed from biking, rollerblading or skateboarding or any of the other action sports that have came about in our time that we know, all of the kids that have started scootering are kids that have been born into the internet. So all of these kids are conditioned to already want to watch all these YouTube videos. They're already conditioned into like not knowing what a magazine is. They're already conditioned and like we're building like the perfect scooter community for these kids. Scootering like literally is based on Instagram. Like it is. Scootering like your account in scootering is Instagram. Like as bad as that sounds like that's what it is. And it's like but that's that's how just scootering is because scootering has been born in the internet. The first scootering videos were posted on YouTube. They weren't on VHSs. They were they were on the internet. All these all the scootering 
content and all the scootering information has always been on the internet. It always has been. So it's like scootering, it's very hard to tell in the exact direction it's going because it's such a new and advanced type of like action sport because it's solely based, like it was solely born into the internet. And I, I think that's like something really cool about it. And it's very hard to predict the future of it because we just don't know because we've never seen anything go this route before, like compared to other action sports. Right now I'm gonna talk about the hate. People say they hate scooters, but do they really? Honestly. <laughs> Sorry. It's like if you hate, like I always hear skateboarders say, like these grown skateboarders always say, oh yeah, I just hate scooter kids. But it's like, do you hate scooter kids or do you just hate kids? Because if you put that scooter kid you hate at the skate park on a, a, a skateboard, for example, would it make the problem any better? Because like a scooter kid is literally only, only at a skate park riding around because he wants to be like the older kids and he wants to like look up to the older guys, so that's what he's doing. So if you take him off the scooter, which he can ride decently well, and put him on a skateboard, is he automatically gonna grow like brain cells and all, like, all of a sudden not get in your way, or is he just gonna drop the board into the bowl and get even more in your way? Like, I, like you decide, honestly. If you're gonna hate scootering because of little kids at the skate park, then you just hate little kids for being little kids. And I know it sucks, like it honestly does suck, get it like little kids getting in the way because it's like what if you hit them what if you like hurt them what if you like yell at them I I I I I understand it like I get it but it's like that's like little kids are going to be little kids and like they will just want to be like older kids so it's like like yelling at them and screaming at them and calling them horrible and making them feel bad like that's not going to help the issue you're just going to scar them for life so like another interesting thing going along with that is like suppose that kid at the skate park who is like a little kid, like suppose a five year old kid riding around in a skate park on a little scooter. That little kid goes to the skate park and gets yelled at by some older guy saying, oh get out of the way you snake. Suppose that kid gets yelled at and then never wants to go to a skate park again. But suppose he didn't get yelled at and he scooters for another like couple weeks and then he's like, oh dad, I wanna go get a skateboard, gets a skateboard and then becomes the best skateboard in the whole world. Like you just never know. Like scootering isn't like, every kid on a scooter isn't gonna scooter for the rest of their life. Like they're not. Scooters are an outlet for any action sport. Scooters are just an easy learning curve. Like I said in the beginning of the video, they're easier than any other sport. That's why they get picked up so easily and that's like, that's why they're so like attractive to people. So it's like, just be respectful of those little kids and I like I promise you like, they're not gonna act as dumb forever. Like they're gonna grow up, they're gonna realize like that they were doing stupid stuff at the skate park and they're not gonna do it anymore. Like that's just how it is. Just set a good example and like that's gonna be the best thing in building the scooter community, honestly. So something that happened recently that's really cool and is paving a way for like how skate parks should be the rest of the, in, the, in the rest of the world and the United States is last year California passed a law saying that scooters are allowed at every single skate park and not just that. It's basically an all wheel law. So anyone at a skate park, anything with wheels that doesn't have a motor is allowed at skate parks. And this allows scooters at every single skate park, which is super, super cool and awesome. Like it's, it's what we need. And if every single state could then adopt like scootering being part of skate parks, then scootering is gonna be here forever because there's always gonna be more, more and more kids going to the skate park on scooters wanting to learn how to scooter because of the amount of content that's coming out and everything that's going on. Another cool thing that I'm starting to see now is actually anti-scooter signs. This is actually really cool because people are starting to notice that scooters are becoming a thing and they're starting to print signs that say no scootering along with no skateboarding, no rollerblading, no biking, all these other sports. Like we're now like being included in that and I think that's really cool that people from the public are taking notice and they're taking action about it and it's it's, it's a cool respect level that I like. I'm gonna talk about the numbers in scootering because the numbers in scootering are insane, like they are. I'm just gonna take myself for example. Now, I turned my Instagram account off uh, business mode. If you have your account on business mode, take it off because that is possibly one of the reasons why people's accounts are getting deleted. So I took mine off, I took mine off business. Oh, another thing, also, don't, press the appeal thing whenever you upload a video onto Instagram. Like suppose you upload a video and it has a copyrighted song, don't appeal it because if you appeal the wrong song, your account will get deleted because 
That's what Instagram is doing now apparently, so don't do that. But we have some of the highest numbers there is in action sports. Like, like it's crazy. If you look at a scooter rider compared to like a professional skateboarder, like, and I'm not, I'm not saying like the top dog professional skaters, but I'm saying like the average pro skater, like scooter riders have more followers than the average pro skater and we get more likes, we get more views. It's starting to show like how big the scooter community is getting because of how big the numbers are. So something that I find very interesting about scooter riders post is we get a very high amount of views compared to like ratio. So that means a lot of people are liking scooter videos, but not showing any like attention to it. So that means like everyone loves scooters. Like everyone loves scooters deep down. Scooters are sick and you have to admit they are. But like people are too scared to be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna like this video of a scooter rider because they don't want their friends and people talking bad about them. Oh, you like scooter posts. Oh, you're so lame, blah, 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 blah. People are so interested in scooters, but they just don't wanna show it. And I just think that's so hilarious. And I get good views, good amount of views on my videos, but like, like suppose I'll get 50,000 views on my video, but only 10,000 likes. That means that 40,000 people saw the video. Oh, this is cool. Oh, but I'm not gonna like it because they're just too scared to or something. I, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's just very interesting to me. And I see so many scooter riders, like literally, if you post a video of a girl riding a scooter, guaranteed 100K views, no doubt. And it's just so funny to see like how people think about scooters. Oh, girls riding a scooter. Oh, oh, I can't take it. Uh, Another like interesting thing about scooters is like how controversial they are. People always say to me like, oh, well, scooters are so lame, but then they'll proceed to like have their eyes glued to me while I go do a trick because they're so like interested about it in like a weird way. I just think it's so like fascinating to me. People love flips. That's why people watch the Olympics. That's why people watch, I don't know, like parkour. That's why people watch stuff. And scooter riders do the most flips out of like anyone. And it's like, if you go to a skate park, the probability of seeing somebody flip on a scooter is a lot higher than the probability of seeing somebody flip on a skateboard or a bike or rollerblades, if you see any rollerbladers. Um, so it's like, People are always going to the skate parks expecting to see some crazy thing happen on a scooter. And that always like keeps people's attention and that like attracts more and more people. And that gets more people into the sport, thus saying why I think scootering is gonna be around forever. Now the last little bit that I wanna talk about is the future of the sport. Now, I think scootering is gonna be around forever like I keep saying in this video, but I honestly am very curious to see where the scooter community goes. Right now, in this time, this video is being filmed in September of 2017. I'm really curious to go back in a couple years from now, watch this video, and think like, oh, this is how the scooter community is, or this isn't how the scooter community is, because I'm, I'm, I'm honestly very curious to see the direction that it's going. Um, I think scootering is here to stay. I think that it's, it's a very hyped up sport. I feel like it's, it has a lot of attention on it and I feel like it has the potential to grow into a massive audience, like a, like a massive scale. Like I, I know it has the potential to just be the biggest. And I don't know, I'm just stoked to see where it goes. I, I can't really say anything to this point. I'm not gonna like speculate where I think scootering is gonna be, but yeah. All right, well, this was like my first ever attempt at making like a talking type video. Um, if you guys enjoyed this type of video and if you guys wanna see more videos like this, make sure to drop a comment. I wanna hear you guys' constructive criticism on what I talk about and how I talk, all sorts of cool stuff. I just wanna hear you guys' opinions mostly. If you guys wanna follow me on Instagram, go ahead, it's White Trash Willy. Make sure to go follow Undialed on Instagram, at Undialed TV. Make sure to go follow Clayton on Instagram, at Clayton Lindley. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and we'll catch you tomorrow. Peace out.